The Gozum's plane is currently on its way from Belarus to Russia. Wow. People thought maybe he would take a flying lesson from a high window somewhere. But yet he's on his way back to, is it to Moscow? Is he going to meet with Putin? I heard that's heard Putin was in St. Petersburg. But I don't know, guys. What is going down? And what's happening with the Wagner forces? Are they all going to uh, integrate into uh, the Russian military? No, actually, they've got uh, camps been built in Belarus. So why is it Lukashenko wants Wagner in Belarus? And what is he up to? And what is Pogrosin up to? What will become of the Wagner forces? These are the huge questions before us today. These are the wild cards that may determine where things are going from here, including war with the West and all the rest. And so the Wagner group forces, by the way, actually are in several African nations right now because Wagner actually is kind of the tip of the spear of the Russian foreign policy. So believe it or not. Yeah, in fact, uh, Wagner forces are in Syria. Some of them are facing down American forces also in Syria, which begs the question, why are we there? Uh, you know, they are securing the oil and gas fields in Syria. They're also in Libya, uh, where they've uh, supported the uh, rebel leader there, uh, Kahafa Haftar, I guess is what you said, because he's trying to overthrow the UN-backed government in Libya. So uh, also they're in Sudan, they're in uh, Central African Republic, they're in Mali, Mozambique, and several other African nations. I mean, it's like well over a dozen, uh, you know, Syria is not an African nation, by the way, it's Middle East. So they're all over the world uh, serving the interest of Russia, and they belong to, uh, of course, Prigozhin, or at least Prigozhin is the head man of it in some fashion. So... Uh, I can see why there's a lot of uh, hand-wringing over what to do with Wagner. Here's a funny other thing. Wagner re uh, uh, reopened all their offices in Moscow throughout Russia yesterday. They're recruiting again. Now, here begs another question. Who's paying for Wagner? They're mercenaries. they got to be paid. And Russia's been footing the bill. Who's footing the bill now? Is Russia still footing the bill? Maybe for the forces in Africa. Are they paying it to Pogosin? Uh, how is these things? How are these things been handled? Uh, is Lukashenko paying for part of the uh, Wagner Group today? See, there's actually possibly a reason because Lukashenko just came out today and announced that uh, Belarusian forces might secure Western Ukraine. That's breaking news in and of itself. That's worth a whole other video. That that Wagner uh, may join them in that because. The Belarusian army is nothing to brag about. If you think the Russian army uh, has been somewhat less than absolutely spectacular, uh, the uh, uh, Belarusian army would probably look like a cheerleader squad for them at best. They're, they're, they're small, not a big army, and they're not battle-hardened. Uh, they, they just have, and they don't have a lot to brag about, whereas the Wagner forces are the uh, mo most battle-hardened troops in the area. And as you can see, they're the ones that did the dirty work in taking Bakhmut and doing a lot of other heavy lifting. And that may be another reason that Putin just has a hard time giving up on them. And of course, uh, Pigrosin came out and spoke finally, I believe it was yesterday for the first time when he got into Belarus. And he reiterated, hey, I wasn't going after Putin. This wasn't a coup. I was just trying to uh, draw attention to the corruption in the uh, Russian military. And he, of course, he was going after Shogu. He wants to see Shogu replaced. Will he get that wish? I kind of doubt that. But the overall... What we're seeing here is uh, a lot of consternation because, for one, uh, Putin did come out. Oh, yeah, Putin came out after cutting the deal to uh, to basically uh, make a peace, say, that with Wagner Group and goes and say, hey, I won't prosecute them. They're free to go. He actually came back and said that he would, in fact, prosecute them. And then he turned around 12 hours later, as yesterday, he said, okay, we know what we will uh, prosecute these guys. But 12 hours later, he says, no, nope, no. Nope. We're not going to do it. Uh, he uh, backtracked on that. So uh, <laughs> this was, of course, after the FSB, which is the, you know, that's organization like the KGB, that's the modern name for it, that uh, Putin came out of, announced that they were dropping all charges against Wagner. So this flopping back and forth, and maybe that final drop, charge drop is why Prigozhin possibly is going back to, at least his plane is going back to Russia. There's some mission there. Is Prigozhin in it? Does he have a representative in it? What's happening? Is it going there to grab his family to get him out of Russia? 
you know, the, that's supposedly one of the reasons he stopped the uh, advance, theoretically, was that his family was put under duress, threat. Uh, that's uh, one of the stories that's out there. There's several different stories and angles to that. Maybe they all have merit to them. I don't know. Uh, we're in the fog of war, my friends. But uh, th 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 this drama continues. So the Wagner forces are building camps in Belarus. Belarusian uh, forces right now are on a 10-day mobilization. They just started it, I believe, yesterday or the day before. 10-day mobilization. Are they getting ready to strike into Ukraine? I don't know. But the thing is, uh, yeah, how do they do that without the Wagner Group? And the Wagner Group is not all in there yet, to my knowledge. So that would seem to take time. Maybe the end of the 10-day period, uh, possibly. But the thing is, is what, and I've covered this in the past. I said, if Russia really wanted to take Ukraine, they need to cut off the supply routes from the West that uh, supply arms into Ukraine. If they would want to come in from Belarus and go down the western side of Ukraine and take those roads and bridges and supply routes through that way. And in doing that, they would starve Ukraine off and they could crush Ukraine if they did that, if they could keep NATO from getting involved. Of course, Germany just moved a whole bunch of troops, I think 15,000 or something, uh, into Lithuania up next to Kaliningrad, which is Russian territory. It's kind of an exclave outside of the rest of the contiguous Russia, kind of like Hawaii and and, and uh, Alaska are the United States outside of the uh, contiguous continental United States, but they are states. Kaliningrad is the same, but Kaliningrad is armed to the teeth. It's kind of like an unsinkable aircraft carrier for Russia in the middle of NATO. So <laughs> it's getting a little too interesting, my friends. It's getting a little too interesting. So uh, the whole idea that uh, Ukraine would, uh, that, uh, excuse me, that Belarus would enter the war and, and go into Ukraine, that's a big new wrinkle if that's to happen because they've been supporting and allowing uh, the Russian troops to operate out of Ukraine, but not been going in themselves. Another thing is the NATO forces are also kind of lining up there against Belarus. So it might just be that, that, that all that's a ploy. Maybe uh, looking Chico just wants the uh, Wagner group to defend Ukraine. So it may be that looking Chico is paying for the Wagner group himself so they can defend Ukraine. Or maybe there's some kind of drug deal, new deal made between Prigozhin and Putin. Because, you know, even looking cheek gets a lot of his money from Putin. So maybe uh, Putin is cutting a new deal with, and maybe that's why the plane is going to Russia. Maybe there's a new deal that they got a cement to do with how Wagner would operate and basically make up for what happened. But, you know, Putin is needing something to happen, something big to happen fast, because, you know, his tough guy image just got tarnished. He needs to make up for that. And maybe Progrosin will help him out with that. Maybe they will cut some kind of deal, something will happen. I don't know. But the whole idea that Progrosin is still walking free, consider all the people that's been somewhat of a political challenge to Putin before, had a great affinity for taking flying lessons without the assist of aerodynamic devices from real high altitude open windows. So the, or, or swallowing uh, highly radioactive substances like polonium, which is only available to nations that uh, have uh, uh, certain types of reactors. So there you go, my friends. This whole thing is very interesting. That it's, the game is not over. The uh, Wagner forces, like I said, are recruiting in Russia. Uh, they've been told, oh yeah, Putin said, if you're Wagner in Russia, you need to sign a, an agreement with the defense and join it or go to Belarus. So he's trying to move them out to Belarus, but they're still in Russia. And there are some Wagner groups that are holding out uh, resistantly, supposedly. So I don't know, guys. This is a, a drama that's still playing out. We don't know where it's going to go, but it's not good for anybody, honestly. So you know, maybe Ukraine is cheering on, but they might get hit by the, the uh, Wagner group again. It may be really hard. I don't know, guys. Uh, you know, the, the Ukrainians have been focusing everything down on, on the borders where they're trying to make ground to take back uh, the uh, oblast of in the Donbass region and maybe Crimea. They've not been focused. They got forces up on the Belarusian border, though. I've seen a Ukrainian general says, there ain't no way mm -hmm, they're coming through here. They can't, that we got to fortify by it. You got to really question how much they got up there. And if there's a good spearhead type force to blitzkrieg through, and I don't see Belarus doing it on, on their own. If they're going to do that, they probably got to be led by a Wagner group. It's the only group I think can actually accomplish this and cut off these Western supplies. And I said before, it's really, I think that's the way you, Russia could win the war. It may be the only way they could really win the war because they've not been doing all that great of late. So aside from using uh, tactical nukes, which 
may come in the picture later if it don't turn out too well for Putin. So, or, or otherwise. So there's a lot of open questions. NATO is seeming to get up closer and closer to the edge. We may be on the way to World War III, guys, because NATO is really getting closer and closer to being involved or crossing red lines. And, and Ukraine is trying real hard to pull uh, uh, United States over Russia's last red line. So guys, yeah, they want us in full bore. Wow, guys. It's getting a little too interesting. We got this meeting coming up in Vilnius in June of next month, I think 11th and 12th, a big NATO summit. And it's all about this war and Ukraine and how the, the Ukraine, uh, NATO would help them out more. And the talk, the way the talk goes, it sounds like if Ukraine's not made a part of NATO, it's going to be under the NATO umbrella in some fashion. If it's not, oh, the other news, Ukraine has said, hey, well, if you don't put us under your umbrella, we're going to build our own nuke. And they got power plants. They used to have nukes. So they got the, the nuclear power plants. Yeah, they could do that. And if Ukraine built a nuke, oh, my Lord, I don't think Russia will allow it. They would probably then nuke wherever that's happening. They thought it was happening. Oh, my gosh, guys. And then that evokes Article 5, according to the kind of stuff that uh, Senators uh, Richard Blumenthal and Lindsey Graham were talking about. So, guys, it's if you don't think you need to be prepping, what are you thinking? I mean, if you don't think these times are getting a little too interesting. Oh, North Korea. Oh, my God. I need to do a whole video on North Korea. They are really rattling the saber hard in North Korea. And China, my gosh, guys, things with Iran, uh, just Mother Nature. Can't feel Fergie over in Naples may put us in a volcanic winter here soon. Guys, there's so much going on. You need to get ready. You need to, 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 to take care of the things to defend yourself and your family. You need to be able to secure water. You need to uh, go, go to the big box stores and, and stock up on beans and rice. Watch my videos on how to eat free from the weeds and trees. And do go to prepwithgreg.com because we got specials on long-term food stores that last for 25 years. Breakfast, lunch, and went dinner, 2,000 calories a day. And we got a special right now, eighty dollars off of a, a, a two weeks, let's see, four weeks supply of that. So check it out. Go to prepwithgrid.com. Check that out. And uh, there's other prepping supplies in there too, like water filtration and air purification equipment. So just check on the. Yeah, go to prepwithgrid.com, and when you get in there, check, click the micro, uh, the truly <laughs> the my patient supply logo. You can check out truly market too. You need to be planting your garden now for the summer and fall. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, with that, I'm going to say, if you like this content, subscribe, bang that notification bell, and click all. You know, I bring you these things to try to warn you. Keep your eyes wide open, head on the swivel so you can see what's coming or what might come. I don't say these things are going to happen. I've never, this is my, the only thing I ever said was going to happen. I said food prices are going to, I'm saying these things are likely. They could happen for these reasons. When you, when you look at how many threats we got against us between North Korea, China, Russia, this whole thing over there and other things and internal strife here at home. Uh, I, there's a lot of possibilities for mayhem. When you consider all the Chinese nationals are slipping to our Southern border. If you think everything is just hunky dory, you know, I get people on other prepping channels and YouTube attack me. Well, I'm thinking, why are you prepping? What, what, what What's your deal? <laughs> but I try to bring prevention as much as possible. So I do things is try to get the power get hard. So check out my last video. That I did with David Pine. A lot of y'all have not seen that video. And I think we can be right here. Check out that video because uh, there's a lot of things in there you can do to help us get this power grid hardened. Like I chaired two power grid defense conferences. I do believe in prevention as much as possible. And that's why I do a lot of this stuff. That's how I got the prepping side of this channel started. So guys, thank you for watching. Greg out.